What's up guys, welcome back. I'm Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com. If you are hearing an annoying sound right now, it is my AC unit. I am sick and tired of sweating through my clothes out here in the shop. It's like 100 degrees outside, so bear with me today. Today we're back on the CR250 build. This is the CR250 for Dirt Bike Magazine, otherwise known as T1000. You guys can check out the T1000 hashtag on Instagram, at MX Revival. You are going to see some nasty photos of this thing, some nasty in terms of how it used to look, and some nasty in terms of how it looks now. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to subscribe today. Go ahead and drop me an early like if you can. And you know, normally for these videos, I have like a script written out in my phone, get my brain going, and today, I'm just sort of on the freestyle. I have a bunch of odds and ends I need to deal with with the CR250. Everything from smashed up radiators, the new radiators that are really beautiful looking, but we're gonna vapor blast them today just to get the finish matching the bike better. And then I have the seat. The seat is a decrepit pile of shit and we need to get it out to Traction MX. My buddy Pete back east is going to do his magic on the seat, give us something to be really proud of. It's absolutely hammered. I honestly don't know if he can even save this thing. It is super nasty. Pete, don't worry buddy, I'm going to wash the seat first. I would never send it to you like this with a bunch of crap on the bottom. It's a 2003 CR250. It's hammered. It's just absolutely gone. Amazingly enough, the seat foam actually feels pretty firm and it isn't torn so not that I want to reuse the old seat foam but I just spent a hundred and something bucks on a seat shipped it out to Pete he got the seat brand new in the box I won't mention any brand names but the sucker was deformed and we had to send it back so instead of screwing around with brand new seats that aren't worth a you know what anyways we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do with the base pan of this bad boy and just see what we can get out of it if you guys want to check out the masterful seat creations that pete's working on all the time at traction mx go ahead and check them out on instagram at traction mx if you guys want to check out the website tractionmx.com he will make you a full custom seat cover their website is actually really awesome you can go on there pick out all your colors where you want stripes what stitching color just a really really great job and of course he takes great care of mx revival so thank you pete guys go check him out next up i have these just absolutely disgusting and decimated radiators now i know what you're thinking they're not that bad well to be honest they are that bad i think they're disgusting and even though they could probably be straightened out they just won't be perfect i went ahead and replaced these with a set of radiators on ebay you guys have probably all heard of gpi racing if you buy aftermarket radiators for just about any brand even if it's a different vendor the radiators show up and they're typically gpi they fit pretty well they're pretty robust they come with a really nice shiny finish i'll show you that in a minute and the new radiators i bought even came with black silicone hoses that look really good they're really shiny and i really liked that so for 120 bucks you really can't beat it another great option though if you don't want to buy aftermarket radiators and you want to stick with oem you would send something like this to icw radiator back in north carolina my buddy brett is an absolute aluminum wizard he could straighten these out he could gusset these up he could make them look really good make them stronger and on account of the fact that they still hold coolant these are actually a really great candidate for that we've used icw in the past and i have nothing but good things to say about their work so if you guys are dead set on oem radiators and you don't want to take the chance on something aftermarket you definitely need to send your squished up old radiators over to icw again you can check them out on instagram as well and of course they have a website for reference, everybody I mentioned today will also be listed in the description below. So don't worry, you don't need to remember all this. I'll take care of it for you. So here are the new radiators. I gotta say, for 120 bucks with hoses, these look really good. They even came with a cap. I held them up to the frame behind me over here and everything jives really well. I don't have any bad contact points where the radiators hit the frame. Once I install the rubber dampers and all the hardware, they should be spaced off the frame just enough. And today, one of the things we're gonna do is, although this finish is really nice, we're going to jam these suckers into the vapor blasting cabinet behind me because even though, like I said, the finish is nice, I wanna dull it down a little bit. I wanna get that vapor blasted look to match T1000 since the whole theme of the bike is 100% vapor blasted or as much vapor blasting as one man can possibly do. And let me tell you, it is a metric shit ton worth of work, but nothing great comes if you don't put in the work. I also have a really cool trick for you guys today. A lot of the parts are still dirty, like as dirty as the seat. Like the air box, if you can imagine, is just impregnated with dirt. You guys have probably seen the air boots on the outside of your dirt bikes or dirt bikes you bought used or dirt bikes that have been neglected and they are just completely full of dirt that no matter how much you scrub, you can't get it out. Well. I actually stumbled upon a really cool trick to just eradicate that dirt, the dirt that's stuck seemingly in the pores of the rubber somehow. So today we're gonna go ahead and clean up the disgusting air box, the disgusting radiator hoses. They are, like I said, just impregnated with dirt. You wonder how it even gets in there and no amount of scrubbing will do the trick. I stumbled upon this trick on accident. I think I was rebuilding a set of forks. I just got done doing the fork seals 
and as such, they are typically covered in oil when you are done. When that happens, I like to head outside, hit everything with Dawn dish soap and water, get all the oil off, especially if they were going back to a customer. And if my memory serves me correct, I was outside, I had been washing a bunch of my no-toil filters in the no-toil cleaning solution, and there was no Dawn dish soap or something nearby, so since I had this bucket right there with the no-toil soap and solution already mixed up, I think I dunked a rag in it and I started to wipe the oil off the forks and lo and behold, they were spotless and squeaky clean. That same day, I just so happened to be scrubbing an air box of all things. So I was like, ah, I'll give this a try. See if this stuff will strip the oil and the grease and all the crap and contaminants out of the air box. I mean, that's exactly what the stuff was made to do is to remove these contaminants from the no toil air filters themselves. Well, guess what? It worked great and it even eradicated that impregnated dirt that just, I don't know how, but it just gets embedded in the rubber. So we're gonna go ahead and try and duplicate that trick today. So stay tuned, we'll move on to that shortly. Other than that, in today's video, I just have a lot of odds and ends. I picked up some foot pegs that are sort of a dark gunmetal gray. I wanna strip the anodizing out of these. So we'll save that for a future video. That will be something upcoming. And to round things out, I've just been kind of going eight with the vapor blaster. I mean, everything looks amazing. I'm getting a really, really brilliant shine out of these brakes these are pretty much rebuilt the shine i've been able to get out of all the brake components is just second to none it's gorgeous in addition to stripping the anodizing off those new foot pegs in the next video by then i will probably also have the suspension back the suspension will be coming back from ride jbi in southern california all right so let's get to it i need to mask these off i need to plug all the holes in the radiators because i do not want glass bead from the vapor blaster going into the inside of these radiator cores we're going to jump on over to the gopro in the first person shooter mode so i can use my hands We'll get these suckers masked off and then we're going to take a trip inside the vapor blasting cabinet and I'll show you what that thing can do. And for fun, of course, we'll go ahead and finish one of these radiators and compare it to the other one that's untouched yet. If you guys come up with any questions as you watch the video, don't forget to ask in the comment section below. If I know the answer or if I can help you, I will always try. So let's start vapor blasting and we'll move on to that no toil air filter cleaner trick. All right, guys, here we are on the bench with a beautiful palette of wonderful looking vapor blasted parts. We even have a little bit of carbon fiber going on. If you guys missed the carbon fiber episode that was the last video we did on t1000 so go ahead and check that out it'll be up in the top corner of your screen also it will be in the description below now i need to go ahead and as mentioned mask these off so i can stick them into the vapor blaster i'm going to go ahead and start with this radiator here because i am lazy and it has actually quite a few less holes and ports in it so we got one two here the crossover tube cylinder head and then the bridge to the other radiator anyways i just realized these little baggies were on here and that's actually really great i was going to use the ends of some rubber gloves and then duct tape them a few other ways you can do this these are powder coating plugs and i stick these into all the little holes and nooks and crannies in parts that i want to send into the vapor blaster like the frame there are a lot of small holes that i think are for weep like when you wash your bike and you get water in the frame then the water can drain out of the bike uh, because i didn't want to load the frame with bead and get it heavy and never get the stuff out i use these powder coating plugs and i actually bought these on amazon so they're really cheap as you can see the little pink one i mean it's in relation to my fingers look how tiny that is that's the small this is sort of the medium i used a lot of these in the frame and then the red are a little bit larger so if you guys are getting ready to prep and powder coat a frame or do something like paint you can actually jam these into let's just say for example this subframe bolt hole and you can protect the threads with those here's another way to get it done so on this smaller crossover tube port i'm actually hoping one of these will fit because while i like the powder coating plugs i don't completely trust them uh, i would trust them more if i were to ram one of those in there and then tape it off after so one way or another i'm um, getting it done looks like this is actually that's a really good fit i feel like it's watertight i don't really have any issues with that another thing is i'm going to want to get this really close to the edge there because this particular tube will have a lot of reveal and i want the hose to be able to travel up past the portion where i haven't vapor blasted so that you can't see it when the bike is done same here i would say that radiator hoses probably come up to about this point where the end of my fingernail is and so i'm going to want to mask real low down to about the point where this rubber band is we're going to go ahead and get the stickers off here might need a heat gun some stickers are pretty as you can see, there it is. So uh, maybe I'll try a heat gun with that so it doesn't leave a bunch of residue behind. And just for fun, here's a rubber glove. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, before I realized I had these powder coating plugs and these little automotive uh, vacuum vent caps, I guess is what they're for. I was going to go ahead and chop the fingers off a glove, stick them over the ports in these radiators, duct tape them a little bit, and be on my merry way. These bags are really thin. They kind of have some holes popping up in them already just from transport being in the shipping box. So I will forego the bags, use something a little better, and just do your very best if you're trying to keep crew and media out of your radiators or anything else. At any rate, I'm going to start prepping these radiators for the vapor blaster. In the meantime, I'm going to melt your guys' faces off with some really heavy metal, so enjoy that. Next stop, 
vapor blaster. Nice, I had one big fat vacuum line plug. I wish I had more of these. That actually fits really, really well. I'm the most comfortable with that, uh, more so than the glove. Although I will not be applying any sort of direct pressure to this area. And on top of that, uh, you blast with vapor blaster at really, really low pressure. If you go with a really high pressure, you don't get that shine you're after. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and use a little brake cleaner to clean up the residual sticker on there. You can shoot this stuff right on the radiators, but I'm trying not to splash it everywhere. And you probably also noticed I'm wearing gloves because you do not want to get this crap on your skin. There you go. Easy money. Little bit of brake cleaner. Never has ever let me down. If you're vapor blasting or media blasting or really anything, even if you were hitting these with a scotch Bright pad or one of Cameron's Prime MX pads, you're going to want to make sure that uh, everything is off because even if there's like a little dot as you're hitting this with whatever you're hitting it with, it's not going to let the pad or the media from the blaster get underneath that little bit of sticky residue. So be mindful of that. Let's see what happens when we throw this sucker in the vapor blasting cabinet. And when we're done, we'll go ahead and compare it against his brother over here. Alrighty, see how we did. Yeah, I like that. Let's go compare this to the unblasted radiator and see how much shine we were able to knock off. I really love this look. I think it looks amazing. I really, 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 really like this look, obviously. Here is what we started with, almost like more of a chrome. So side by side, you can definitely tell this is way more glossy. This is way more flat. It still has a nice liquid metal look to it which is what we're going for with T1000. Need to go ahead and mask this guy off and do the same thing. Only caveat here is that I'm gonna wanna be careful about the cap because it's probably not aluminum, it's probably steel. And as such, it probably has a zinc coating on it or something to keep it from corroding, most likely zinc. So I'm not going to be able to blast this guy. If you guys are trying this at home or in your shop, make sure you don't do this to steel products because you will mess them up and then they will rust. Check this out. Oh yeah much more uniform much less chrome looking i really like it this is the look we're going for across the entire bike guys while we're on the topic of vapor blasting i want to point out that depending on what sort of alloy you're using or what grade of alloy i should probably say for example this aluminum radiator or this type of aluminum it's probably not the same type of aluminum as this guy here you can see this has a much much brighter shine this one's almost chrome and definitely very liquid metal and what i've come to understand is just depending on the alloy of what i've been blasting as i've learned the machine and learned my ps size a little bit better and I'm always learning trust me some things are just going to blast better than others these for example the uh, adjustment blocks for your chain they look really good but they're more the type of alloy that the radiator is made out of and therefore they have a similar shine when done then you have these guys these are the little spacers that go inside of let's say for example the rubber grommets that hold the radiators against the frame and these suckers here they polished up really really well also and then you have things like this servo motor for the RC valve and it's not that this aluminum wasn't going going to polish up nicely like some of these other parts but this one was blasted at a very high psi and what that does is creates more of a matte finish this is a piece that i actually blasted much earlier on when i first got the machine and i just didn't have things down yet i was blasting them 80 90 psi which is like impossible to see in the cabinet also but i was doing that because all i had ever done was dry blasted and that is a dry blast psi or a really common one then you take a look at this alloy here the rear brake caliper and hanger and again, it's just on another level. And uh, uh, this is done at the same low PSI, probably 20, 30 PSI as the radiators. And it still just looks quite a bit different. It's just very, very liquid metal. So if you can imagine that sucker just bam on the swing arm, just it's gonna pop. Same with the rear master cylinder, very, very bright. Uh, also, I did these a couple different times because when I initially blasted the brakes a while back, 
I did those at the same time as say the servo motor. And so what I did was I ended up figuring some things out and I ended up running these back through the machine. They were of course all in separate parts. The caliper wasn't built yet. All of the pistons were out of the bores on both calipers. And I just ran these again and again until I kind of got a more satisfactory result. Then you have something like this, and I'm not sure you guys can even tell the difference. Maybe you can, I'm gonna point this towards the light, but don't worry, we're not reusing these old screws. They're just keeping everything together. The cap on this master cylinder is a little bit dark, more of a gunmetal, whereas the reservoir itself is more of that liquid metal color. And I did this on purpose. And, and what this is, is I'm trying to create a little bit of an offset where we have a darker gray, almost like a dark gray cap, and then a nice shiny body. And it's so subtle, most people aren't gonna notice it. But what I did was I dry blasted this at a really high PSI with a really coarse media, which was actually aluminum oxide, which is what you'd use if you were gonna stir coat or ceramic coat something, or even powder coat. And then I ran it through the wet blaster after. So you end up with this dull, dull color, much like the servo motor, and then it gets smoothed up around the edges and everywhere else by vapor blasting it after. Now this was even vapor blasted at 20 or 30 PSI after the dry blast, and it's still really, really dark. So if I wanted to bring this back up, I would have to blast this with a glass bead in the dry blast cabinet to brighten it back up first, or say scuff it up with one of Cameron's Prime MX pads. Then I could vapor blast it again and bring the shine back up to something like this. So there's a lots of different ways. Everyone develops their own methods. You can use what I'm telling you as a guide, although you will probably end up with your own preferences. And then there's things like peg springs. These have a fresh coating of zinc on them. They're brand new. It's so much easier with parts like this to just replace them instead of try and fix up the old springs. You can blast them. They're steel. They'll rust. You can zinc dip them. But if you zinc dip them with one of our plating kits, in this case, you're probably not going to get the zinc between the cracks and they'll probably still rust. So something like this, you would just replace. It's not really worth your time and effort. Same with the pins. I could have actually done this with our zinc plating kit. If you're interested in checking out how to replate and use our zinc plating kit and make absolutely disgusting bolts look good like this, go ahead and check out the video in the top corner of your screen. But same for me. I just wanted to replace them. They're ready to go. You end up spending much more money on parts and that is one caveat to the whole deal. But for me, sometimes time is money and this was just much easier to replace something like this. At any rate, I hope this explains vapor blasting a little bit better. Like I said today, I'm kind of just doing some freestyle. One thing's for sure, this is no longer with us. This heap, this turd, we're moving on to a much better finished product, complete with black silicone radiator hoses. You guys will see those in a future video. And as promised, the next step for today's video is we're going to go ahead and get into things like this rubber, the air box, the air boot on your air box, and things that are just really, really impregnated with dirt. If you were to scrub this, you just would not get all this out. It's got two stroke oil in it, just contaminants from 2003. And you know, you do not want to spend money on all these if they're in good shape. If you were to buy these separately, everything adds up. It's just so expensive. The longer you build and the more time and money you put into it, you look back and the next thing you know, you got six grand in the hole. Parts like this, like who the hell wants to replace this part when you could just clean it? No one's even gonna see it. It sits on the frame, the tank sits on top of it. And again, also, who wants to spend a million years scrubbing it? Because I guarantee you, this stuff, this impregnated dirt, it does not come out easy. So next up, let's go check out that no-toil trick. Let's see what it can do. You guys can give it a shot if you like it. All right, guys, it's that time in the video for the no-toil trick. I promised you earlier, I have my no-toil air filter cleaning solution here. This stuff is actually really gentle on your hands. But even still, if you're gonna have a prolonged period of time where your hands are submerged in it, like I am, I recommend some rubber gloves. Just dries your skin out. And uh, if you're trying to get close to mama, you know, she might not like getting dried out like that. Uh, we just had a baby, so ask me how I know. Call me smooth hands. Anyways, I've got a little bucket here. I'm going to use for these smaller pieces that I'll just throw right in a bucket, no problem. Uh, for the air box, I have this bigger container. This thing is gonna need a soak. It is disgusting. It is just super grimy. And this is what I was talking about. This tan, sort of just impregnated rubber. Uh, it just gets stuck in there. The dirt gets stuck in there. You cannot scrub this out easily. It just does not come off. So what I learned was that the no toil actually gets that stuff out. And go figure, you know, it's made for air filters, cleans off the stuff that's in your air box. All the stuff that's in your air box is pretty much the same nasty stuff that's on your air filter. Maybe just uh, more time and build up than the air filter itself. If you're doing a good job of cleaning your filters every ride, right? Okay, I thought so. Anyway, take a good hard look at this disgusting nasty mess of an air box because the next time you see it, 
it's not going to look like this anymore. I'm also going to use this cleaning trick on a lot of little parts I don't wish to replace. I have spent just a ridiculous amount of money so far building this bike. So at any rate, you know, like I said earlier, who the hell wants to replace that? You know, that's not really money well spent. Clutch, perch, and uh, lever cover there. These radiator hoses. I actually have some new ones coming. But I'm going to go ahead and clean these anyways. Why the heck not? I've got a few other things in here. Some stiff bristle brushes. A couple different types. And then I have all the electronics. And these are just really, really nasty too. But this isn't something that you want to dunk into one of these buckets and submerge. Obviously, they're electrical wires. We don't want to risk corroding them. We don't want to risk any kind of water sitting in them, causing a short later on. So this is something you're really going to want to clean by hand. And it's just as dirty. I mean, this thing's just trash. It's 2003. It's probably never been off the bike. And today we're going to go ahead and try and take care of all these spider webs, dirt, leaves, debris, and whatever else is stuck to this bad boy. You know, this isn't exactly an exact science, guys. So when you pour the no toil in here, you're going to actually feel it clump up in the bottom. If you were to normally use this inside your clothes washer as prescribed by the directions on the bottle it would obviously dilute a little bit better so if you're using no toil this way got to make sure to uh, get it all fully diluted you'll feel it like i said in big chunks down there and uh, as mentioned not much of science to it so there you go the rest is easy you just got to start scrubbing not entirely sure if you guys will be able to see how clean the center is here and then i still have some of that really stuck hard to get impregnated dirt over here that'll be gone in just a second this stuff just works amazing that's actually a much better example there all that really really stuck in the pores type dirt versus 30 seconds of scrubbing on the top there as for big nasty we're gonna let her start soaking now because that thing is so so crusty i need to get a little head start on it you know what Let's just make it a party. Oh yeah. Making short work of it. This trick works so good. Look at the rivet. Nice and shiny. Gets everything out of all the cracks. If you have a stiff bristle brush, just try this really bad spot. There it is. You guys can see the difference between this stuff that's just eternally stuck otherwise. And this area I just briefly hit right here, so much better. All right, guys, I've been scrubbing this thing for about 15 minutes, and oh my god, it looks so much better. It's not completely done, but I want to show you guys a few things. Let's give it a quick rinse. I want to show you just exactly how fast this takes shape and how fast it works. All right, so check this thing out. Look at the hardware, the clamping ring, and the screws all around the edges, inside the screws, if you can see it just spotless really really spotless it's great all the gunk around the old uh, carburetor clamp here a lot of it's gone still a little bit in the cracks like i said i've been scrubbing this for about 15 minutes but this stuff works so fast and loosens everything up so well that it just sort of eradicates everything as soon as you have a brush stroke go by it there's a little tiny speck right there i'm just going to keep going but 15 minutes so much better I didn't hit this area yet. You can kind of see some of that impregnated dirt I was talking about. Man, everything around here, all the nooks, all the crannies, it makes it very, very, very easy to clean. You just let it soak for about five minutes and then get after it. Getting a pretty good looking bucket of parts there. Everything's all blacked out again. It looks so good. Oh yeah, much, much, much better. Now, of course, the air box is still used. It's not gonna win any beauty pageants, but at least now it's not covered in trash and garbage and debris and gunk and oil and dirt and you know what. So that's a big step in the right direction. And there's what's left. Oh, that's nasty. Alright guys, so we covered a ton of ground in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I was kind of all over the place, like I said earlier, just a freestyle. Show you what's going on in the shop, show you what's going on with the CR250. 
sometimes that's just how builds are. You got a lot of random stuff to get done. So hope you found value in some of today's techniques. Of course, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below. I just heard back from JB at Ride JBI Suspension while I was filming this video. He's confirmed our suspension for T1000 is actually coming back at the end of this week. And I think that stuff's really gonna blow your mind. I can't wait to show you guys that suspension. I did a really killer vapor blasting job on all the suspension components. JB went ahead and DLC coded the lower fork shafts and also the shock shafts. If you're not familiar with DLC you guys got to come back you got to check it out all right guys that's all I've got for today I really appreciate you spending your time with me here on YouTube if you'd like to get caught up with the T1000 build or the CR500 project ping king build both of these videos will be perfect to catch you up to speed with what's going on with these two builds so far until next time shred safe I appreciate you and I will see you soon